Hello everyone, this video will discuss the procedure for the exercise about the effects of chemicals on bacterial growth. The chemicals that we will be using for this experiment will be merthiolate, tincture of iodine, sodium hypochlorite, and 70% alcohol. This exercise has three general steps. The first one is the addition of your organisms to the different types of chemicals. The second one is the incubation of these chemicals with the inoculated organisms. And the third one would be the reading and the interpretation of the results after the incubation. Let's now proceed with the step-by-step -step procedure. So the very first step is to prepare the different nutrient broths that would be given to you by giving them labels. Ideally, 60 nutrient broths will be given per group, but for this upcoming experiment, only eight tubes will be given for each group because groups one to five will be processing S. aureus and groups six to 10 will be processing Bacillus subtilis. So that means groups one to five will not process B. subtilis and groups six to 10 will not process S. aureus. The labels should be, so we have set A and set B. For set A, we have to label the different time, so that's five minutes on each, and the name of the different chemicals. So M is for merthiolate, TI is for tincture of iodine, sodium hypochlorite, and alcohol. And of course, the organism that is to be processed. Set B will be the same, except for this time, change the time to 15 minutes. For groups 6 to 10, we also have set A and set B. Same labeling, 5 minutes for merthiolate, and the difference is the name of the organism. The second step is to add the organism given to your group into the different types of chemicals. So each group, again, will have four different chemicals. We have merthiolate, tincture of iodine, sodium hypochlorite, and 70% alcohol. Each group will also get a stock broth culture of the organism, either the S. aureus or the Bacillus subtilis. And from this, we have to get 250 microliter of the organism and transfer it to each of the chemicals. So 250 will go to merthiolate, 250 microliter to tincture of iodine, another 250 to sodium hypochlorite, and 250 to 70% alcohol. While doing this, make sure that you do not let the inoculum run down at the side of the test tube. And after transferring, you have to mix them by gently tapping the bottom of the test tube. The third step is to incubate the chemical tubes and to inoculate them to the different nutrient broths. So after adding the organism to the different chemicals, we have to incubate them using a water bath. When you place the test tubes inside the water bath, start two timers, one for five minutes and another one for 15 minutes. So again, when you place the test tubes inside the water bath, you have to start these two timers at the same time. And when the first timer alarms, which is at five minutes, we now inoculate from the chemical tubes into the nutrient broths labeled as set A. So again, these nutrient broths are the ones that were previously labeled before we started the experiment. So after five minutes, we transfer a loop full of uh, the chemical with the organism into the nutrient broth labeled as merthiolate and then from the tincture of iodine another loop full into the test tube labeled as 5TI and so on and so forth. So again groups 5, 1 to 5 will have S. aureus and groups 6 to 10 will have B. subtilis. Make sure that you only remove the test tube from the water bath when you are ready to inoculate and put it right back inside the water bath as soon as you finish the inoculation for it to continue the incubation period. The fourth step is the continuation of the incubation and inoculation. The chemical tubes are still inside the water bath and we wait for the second timer to alarm, which is at 15 minutes. And when it alarms, we have to transfer a loop full of the chemical into the nutrient broths labeled as set B.
After 15 minutes, each group should have inoculated eight nutrient broths from the different types of chemicals with organisms. So the fifth step is to incubate all of these eight nutrient broths for 24 hours at 37 degrees Celsius. Step six is done on day two, which is after 24 hours of incubation of all the nutrient broths. So after incubation, we have to examine the amount of growth on each of the nutrient broths. A table is given for your reference. So we have to check for the grading, look at the description, and give an interpretation. So a grade of zero is given when the nutrient broth is clear. So this is an example of a grade zero. So that means that there is no bacterial growth in this test tube. A grade of one plus is given when the test tube is slightly turbid, which indicates a little bit or some bacterial growth. And the interpretation for this is that there is a poor growth of the organism. 2 plus is given to the nutrient broth with a significant turbidity, which indicates a lot of bacterial growth. So the interpretation for this nutrient broth growth is good growth. So this is 2 plus. And a 3 plus is given to a nutrient broth, which is completely turbid. And another description for this nutrient broth is that it is non-transparent. And the interpretation for this is that it has an excellent growth of organism. And that ends this video about the procedure for the effects of chemicals on bacterial growth. Next, we will discuss the effects of temperature and UV light on bacterial growth. Thank you for watching.